Hey, how you doing? My name is Emilio. Thank you so much for joining me today. I work in technology and I absolutely love it. And you watching this video, you probably want to get into technology. And in this video, we're gonna ask a question that I asked. How do I get experience to get into technology? I'm gonna be covering my top five, before we do get into that, do what you do in the socials by subscribing, clicking on that button and on the bell so you don't miss out on any of my videos. It's really, really hard when you have not had a job in technology to then get a job in technology because people want you to have experience in technology, but you don't have any. So then how do you get the experience? to get the job in technology. Something that I would highly, highly recommend to you if you're wanting to get into tech and you're wanting to learn more about tech, I've dedicated a whole bunch of time to recording a whole bunch of training videos around all things technology. Online courses, you can check those out in the description below around Windows Server, around Mac, around Active Directory, anything that is to do with tech, I've tried to record stuff in there to help people like you. Tell people like you who either know a little bit about technology or know a lot about technology but want to learn more. And I wish I had have had this stuff back when I was starting off in my career because it would have helped me a lot and it would have saved me a lot of pain later on because I didn't know certain things. So check out some of those because I know that you'll find them helpful. Here are the top five things that I would recommend around getting the experience or at least getting the know-how to get that job, to apply for that job. Number one is a passion for technology. You have picked the right career. You know thousands of careers that you could have chosen, you pick the best one. My favorite, your favorite, technology. Technology runs the world. Companies cannot operate without technology. Years ago, they could do things on paper. Now, they rely on technology systems. They rely on software, they rely on hardware, they rely on all of this sort of stuff to even operate. So you are already in a strong position because you've picked something that is in high demand. The majority of companies want technology people. They want technology professionals. They want people who love and breathe technology. So first and foremost, that is great because you have picked the best career that you could for this particular space. So you already having a passion for technology is excellent because I would rather have somebody who loves and breathes tech versus somebody who just sort of likes computers here and there, but don't really, they're not really excited. It's just a job for them. So be passionate for technology. That to me goes a long way. And then with that is know your hardware, know your software, know what's hot, know what's trending, know what is good out there. Delve around your hardware. So understand laptops, understand desktops, understand the parts, understand operating systems such as Windows and Mac. Know these basics. You could play around with this stuff at home, but at least understand the basics and be excited about the tech. Learn the troubleshooting because that already puts you in a much better advantage position. If you've got a PC, why don't you open it up, delve inside, understand the different parts in there the RAM, the hard drive, the CPU, the motherboard, how to build them, how to put them together, all that sort of stuff. You can check out a video that I've got right over there that goes into a little bit more detail around the differences between a laptop and a desktop and the internals, but go and do it yourself. I highly recommend you go and do it yourself. Learn the stuff. For me, I learn the best by doing it myself. I can go and listen to a seminar, go off on a training course, and that's good and that's important. I recommend that you do that. But me going in and getting my hands dirty and doing it myself is so much better and that's the way that I learn the best. And all of that comes with your technology passion, which is one of the best things that you can have. Read, watch, and listen to stuff on all things technology. Hey, you're watching this, great. You're watching this video. You're watching some of my other videos. I've got training courses on all things technology, which you can check out below. Great, get into videos, learn stuff. There's a lot of content online. Learn about other companies. Go into all of your favorite vendors and Apple and, and Microsoft and Dell and Lenovo and all these sort of companies. Watch, read, listen to stuff that they're releasing. Get up to speed with what they're doing read blogs, read forums, get on Reddit, right? And actually get up to speed with what people are talking about, what is trending, what is hot. 
in technology? What does the future hold for technology? Just delve way into all of this. The more you know, the better it is. Because when you do go for that job, and you know technology and it shows. But the fact that you're actively reading and watching stuff and listening to podcasts and doing all this all this sort of stuff on technology, it's excellent. A lot of people are not doing this. I've worked with so many technology people who've been in technology for so long and they've just lost the excitement, they've lost the passion, or they're just in a job that isn't very exciting, but they're not even doing anything themselves to sort of keep up to date with things that are happening. Something that is so important for technology people, beginners and people who've been in technology for years, is to try to keep up to date with what's going on. Because you could learn something today, and then in six months down the track, it's completely out of date. So if you are wanting to get into tech, and you know what's going on, you know what's what's hot, what's trending, it's excellent. Number three is to build your own lab. This is something that I did years and years ago when I was starting off in technology and it helped me tremendously to sort of work my way up and to actually get up to speed with certain technologies and certain things that were being used in businesses. So what I mean by build your own lab. So if you've got spare laptops, you've got spare desktops, you've got spare equipment at home, why don't you set those up in a lab environment and troubleshoot some stuff? Go and build certain more enterprisey sort of software and hardware. Install servers, install networking devices, play around with firewalls, play around with all of this sort of stuff that a lot of people who just start off in IT don't even have that knowledge yet. But if you're building this stuff yourself, if you're troubleshooting, if you're playing around with code, right, if you're actually debugging stuff, you are at a such an advantage that other people will wanna hire you just because you've got the passion, the desire to build your own lab at home. If you do wanna learn more around a lab and sort of where to get started, I've got a video over there that goes into a lot more detail specifically around building a lab and maybe some ideas that I could give you around what sort of technologies you could be learning because there's a lot of stuff. But I'll tell you what, if you go in for an interview and you don't have the experience, but you say, look, I've built a lab I've built all of this sort of stuff and you can prove that you know what you're talking about. Excellent. So the fourth thing is helping your friends and family. You may already be this person. You could be the guy or the girl that your friends, your family call when they need IT support, when they need IT help. They know Fred is the guy that I need. Susan is the girl that I need to help me with my computer issues. My internet is broken, can you help me? Can you come around? Maybe they need some new PCs built and you're the person who lets them know the best stuff to build. You could be that person. If you're not, do more of that. Start getting in people's business when it comes to their technology. Help them out, be there willing to help. And don't say, no, I don't have time. Go and help them. If you're doing it, great, do more of it. The more you do that, the more you're gonna improve in your troubleshooting. Because when you do go and work for a real business, you're gonna be doing stuff like that, but just a lot more. You're gonna be doing it in a business with a lot more people. But if you've already got that experience, you've done it with people's computers, with people's laptops, you've diagnosed networking problems, then you're in a much better advantage because you've already got those skills and that's something that you could add when you are going in for that interview, when you're adding in that resume. And the last one, number five, is why don't you look at getting some real world experience? Now, of course, you're looking at me and going, Emilio, uh, I don't have experience. That's the whole point of this video. Well, why don't you look at reaching out to companies and saying, I would like to go and help you with IT for free. That's a shocking thing. Going and doing work for free. You'll be surprised how many people are willing to take people on for work experience. If you're not willing, willing to do it for free, why don't you go and say, hey, look, would you be willing for me to come in for 50 bucks, for 100 bucks a week to sort of help you out with some IT? I could work with your IT team. I could help them build some PCs, install some software, do some basic troubleshooting, whatever it is. Offer your services to some companies to help them in some basic IT skills, some basic IT um, responsibilities. Because then if you've got that, you can then add that into your resume and then you're good to go. That's what I did. Years ago in, I can't remember, I was in 10th grade, I did exactly that. 
I love technology. I loved opening up PCs, but I never did it in a workplace. So I actually went and said, hey, I was on my holidays, I was on my school break, and I actually, rather than going off on a holiday or on a vacation, I actually went and offered up my time at a company for two weeks and actually just sat there, learned, listened, and did the nitty gritty stuff. It was basic, it was, it was boring at times, but I got something in there, some experience, so that when I updated my resume, my CV, when I went for my interview, I was able to say, look, I did some work experience for a two week period in this time, and this is what I did. It's better to have that than to have nothing. These are five things that I did. These are five things that you should do. It helped me, and I'm sure it will help you to land that job. Thank you so much for tuning in. Do what you do on the social medias everywhere by liking, commenting, subscribing, clicking on the button, on the bell, click on my face there, and also check out some of my other videos so that you don't miss out on all things tech.